So we're talking about brain-derived neurotropic factor. When those and low levels seem to indicate potential issues down the road, are there things we can do to boost those levels? Are there dietary things? Are there exercises, uh, brain games, anything that we can do to, to boost those levels that way? Well, any muscle that you flex, you mm -hmm. tend to keep healthy. So it's kind of a use it or lose mm -hmm. it. Um, I definitely try and keep busy mentally as, as much as possible, reading, learning, you know, in that respect. Sure. Um, there's evidence also that physical exercise increases BDNF levels. So uh, this is one of the really nice benefits, the side benefits of exercise, is mm -hmm. that BDNF levels are shown to go up after vigorous exercise. And in fact, muscle tissue has been shown to secrete BDNF or stimulate release of BDNF um, into the circulatory bloodstream. Hmm. Can you explain what neurofactor is? Sure. Neurofactor is essentially a proprietary extract of coffee fruit. And we've been working on um, the idea of coffee fruit since the very early 2000s. Um, we, we recognized that it had certain phenolics uh, within it and potent antioxidant capacities uh, that nobody was taking advantage of. In fact, the industry recognized that the fruit of coffee was basically an industrial waste and they would strip off the fruit, throw it away, and use the seed, which, of course, we all roast and grind mm -hmm. up and brew for coffee. Um, well, we've done the bulk of our research on using the whole fruit, meaning it comes off the caffea plant intact, and we quick dry it, and then we grind it and extract the seed and the beautiful pulp that's around it, and there are really mar marvelous characteristics to it. Mm -hmm. And so we do a, a water ethanol extraction of that fruit, and the resultant is what we've called neurofactor. Mm. And so people will want to know this after hearing that explanation, but it's you can't go and drink more coffee and get the same effects, correct? <laughs> That's a great question. No, not really. Um, we've done a couple of clinical studies and we're, we're going to be doing even more, and I can explain that briefly. Um, mm -hmm. We did a pilot study um, about 18 months ago on Neurofactor, and in the study, we took groups of 10 people, 10 or 12 people, and we set it up so we had multiple groups, and the multiple groups consisted of a placebo, um, no treatment, meaning just fasted mm -hmm. overnight, our coffee fruit extract, uh, green coffee bean extract, chlorogenic acid, there's a method to the madness here that I'll explain, <laughs> okay. and also a grape seed extract, and caffeine. And the reason we set up all those legs of the study was that we knew right away people would ask the question sure. that you asked, well, maybe I should just have a cup of coffee. But the only group of all of those that had statistically significant and really significant results was the coffee fruit extract group, the neurofactor group. Caffeine didn't do it. There was a slight trend toward some activity, but nothing profound. Um, chlorogenic acid didn't do it. The green coffee bean extract didn't do it. So we, we saw across the board that there's really something special of which we really don't know what it is yet. We're working on that. But within mm -hmm. this whole coffee fruit extract that none of the other uh, materials had. So that really got us excited and we designed another study, a second study, that we just finished not too long ago um, with a group of 20 people. And it's a crossover study. And what we did this time was we just wanted to reiterate that the coffee fruit extract 
neural factor caused this increase in the um, intracellular BDNF. And sure enough, it did against a placebo. We did the, the washout period, crossed the group over and had them do it again, and it verified those results. Interestingly, in this, um, we decided to put the final nail in the coffin, if you will. I hate to use that in terms <laughs> of a clinical study. <laughs> but we uh, gave another group a cup of coffee just to see, well, okay, but how about brewed coffee? And it didn't work. Mm. So that was sufficiently exciting. Now we have two published studies showing you know, increases mm. in BDNF um, that we decided to go on to design two more studies that I'll, I'll briefly tell you about. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this second study, we also, um, our biologist, Zbigniew Piechkovsky, who is leading our R&D effort, um, has been doing a lot of research on uh, messenger RNA and um, how cells talk to one another. And he's been studying um, these vesicles called exosomes. Um, exosomes are, are basically like little postage envelopes that the cells use to communicate with one another. Different types of tissue can send messages to different parts of the body <laughs> And it's, it's how our genetic structure communicates. And there's been a lot of debate in the science community whether or not BDNF can actually cross the blood-brain barrier. Because if it can't, like if we exercise and we generate BDNF, it may be great for our peripheral nerves, keeping our nerves healthy and helping regulate our appetite, um, maybe our metabolism, but what does it do for our brain if it can't cross the blood-brain mm -hmm. barrier? It's a protein and um, it's large, so it's arguably not getting there. Well, as it turns out, we measured the relative changes in the blood BDNF and the exosomal BDNF. And he worked long and hard to figure out a platform in order to be able to measure this exosomal BDNF. And as it turns out, the exosomal levels of BDNF increased more than the blood BDNF mm. by a real ratio. So why is that exciting? Well, we know that exosomes cross the blood-brain barrier. They're only between 10 and 30 nanometers in size. They're really tiny, mm -hmm. and so they can go through this permeable protective barrier into the brain. So we know that BDNF is getting there. Um, having all this information after these two studies, we decided that we would go to UCLA to do a cognitive study, and that's going to be initiated this year. We're going to be looking at how BDNF may really modulate um, short and longer term memory um, as stimulated by our neural factor. So um, what we're trying to do is A, show that it has a function, but B, now we're trying to put rubber to the road in terms of what's in it for me, for the consumer. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it really boils down to in the end, mm -hmm. is, you know, okay, it's changing this marker. I have no idea what BDNF is. All right. but I'll take it if you'll tell me what it's really going to do for me. So mm -hmm. if, we could, if we can show uh, via some studies that cognitivity or um, focus or memory is enhanced in some way, that'll be fairly powerful. Mm -hmm. And then um, actual physical changes in, in brain activity could mm -hmm. also be interesting.